Is there one that stands out the most for well, you? I love my country, but Barbados. I love Barbados too. Barbados is my second country. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, you can't live in uh, a glass house with your stone. Or you live in a glass house with your big rock tree in the morning. Oh, Lord. I'm friends with Darwin. I was the one who brought oh. the Beamer blanket down here. I think we may have been on the same flight yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he was telling me about it. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. said, he goes, oh, I think Derek's on that. Dad, how you doing? Dad, how are you? Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Marianne. Jenny, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I went inside. Dane picked me up right from the hotel last night as soon as I came in. Yeah, yeah. So, he's good. He looks good. Yeah, now, guy, hear me? The go kart is standing all over the go kart. <laughs> 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 Who's out here to buy the fix? Thank you. Put him out with one next week so we can do that. Patrick. No, 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 no. You know, you can't live in a glass house with your stone. Or you live in a glass house with your big rock team in the morning. Yeah. One of the good old days, you know? <laughs> now I'm fat, retired. <laughs> really? No, I don't say fat, say healthy. healthy and I think that's probably yeah. what it should be. Exactly. That's what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The animal is the smallest way, right? That's how you hold the fattest child. Are you all good? Are you still sleeping? Are they? I've never seen your face like this before. Oh. You're tired. Oh. These people had me all night. This woman in this thing. Good, good, good. good. I've never seen Ted's face like this ever. Look at that. His eyes. Catching up. It's catching up to him. Hanging with the young people. A little bit different here. Oh, my man, big. Sir, what's going on? Yeah. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Finally made it up a morning. <laughs> Finally got up a morning. I was up from five, man. Better man than me. Better man than me.
meet you. Nice to meet you. And, and you're at U Train at Aqueduct and at Belmont. Uh, Belmont, yes. Hmm. Is that a dream of yours? I used to, um, I was actually, I was a, a jockey here before I leave and went to the States. Mm -hmm. And starting out just riding there and eventually become a trainer. And things been okay, like in the winter, I do pretty good. So make a living during the winter more than the summer when the big boys are there. So tell me something, man. Um, you get um, my man Elijah his first win. Yes, I also I got Elijah his first win. I got Jalan Samuel his first win also. Yeah. What makes you want to do that? Well, with Barbies not being a, a place like in the States. I want to put the guys on the map over there and show them that Barbados produce good riders also. So when they um, come to the States, I try and ride them so people will know who they are. Hey, do you have a big uh, outfit down there? No, actually I just got four right now. But I've been doing pretty good with the four. Um, already, for the year, I won three for the year. Nice, so, nice. So things are pretty, pretty good. Yeah. It's tough, but hard work pays off. There's a lot of history in New York racing, you know, and you being part of that. Like, do you ever sit and think about? You know the opportunities there and you know what it means to you coming from little barbados to be down there training horses yes it do i mean like it being a dream to 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 make it in in places like that in a place like that and and doing like the way i'm doing it's pretty good for me you putting these guys on is special too because a lot of guys now know if they come to New York and they want to ride, they're probably going to reach out to you. Yes, and I have no problem with helping them out, letting, um, letting them know in New York that Barbados produced good riders also, not only Panama and Puerto Rico and those places. So. I try and help out the guys and let them win a couple races, let people see, and things will jump off from there. Now, you know, being in New York and you seeing how the jockeys from Panama and Venezuela and these other places are doing pretty good in Mexico. Um, what do you think is the biggest difference with the jockeys from Barbados coming there? Well, the thing is, in New York, those, those are the places that are more established and the people know knows about those countries more more than they know about Barbados. So when they, the guys come from Barbados and, and people, people don't know too much about them over there, I try and help them out so people will recognize who they are. I think you're doing a good job at that, you know? Yes, I think so too. It's always good when guys know they got somebody that they can lean to. Yes, it is. You know? Yes. Because when I, when I first went to New York, I wanted to ride races also. I didn't know nobody. And the guy I went working with just keep pulling me back from riding in New York. And that so gave me more drive to want to help the guys that come come there from here also. Beautiful. Hi, Ricardo. Nice talking to you, man. Nice talking Keep to you. Keep up the good work, man. Yes, and I interview. I, I watch your shows, and I, I like your shows and, and what you're doing. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. All right, hey, thanks. what's up? This is my sister from Jamaica. Oh, hey. you know, we went to school together yeah. in Toronto. Hey, uh, you good? Those are in the house, people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what, what are you doing here? Vacation, honey. Oh, vacation. I went to Jamaica for three weeks. After the chat rose, three weeks, came back, spent a week, came down. 
Beautiful. Good to see you. Okay, I'm going back to work. Oh, well, good for you. Kadeem Mohammed. Uh, any relations to Mohammed Mohammed? Just, but nope. just. Everybody you know. does that. <laughs> so, how, how long have you been a jockey for? Um, I only, this is my first full year race riding. My first race was last year, go that day. So, this is my first full year race riding now. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to be to want to become a jockey? Um, I had lived here my whole life. So, I was always around people that were being paddle, uh, people that wanted to be jockeys or people that can race all the time. So that influenced me. So it's a, like a, a community thing where you you uh, want to be a jockey or you want to be involved in the horses. You know, the whole community kind of want to be part of the horse racing. Yeah, for sure. Now I see a lot of like taller jockeys and shorter jockeys here, and it seems pretty normal. Uh, yeah. Is that normal for you guys here? Yeah. We've got a lot of people, a lot of people want to be jockeys down here. We've got a lot of that learning. We had a way in school recently shut down, so that hampered a lot. So, we had, well, many of us, there was a good 40 of us. So far, I think only 20 of us down here now. So, I saw another 20 that day that either didn't get through or still looking for somewhere to get through. Nice. Now, before even thinking about it, don't even put any thought into it. Who's the one jockey that really inspires you to, to want to become a jockey? Who's that one jockey? Barbados. Anywhere. I said don't think. You're thinking. <laughs> uh, Jarrell Beckles. Jarrell Beckles. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about Jarrell Beckles. He, he was the first, really, first... When I first started watching races, actually watching races in Barbados, he was the first jockey I picked up on. So I used to see riding all the time. I used to take enough pictures already. And yeah, I had a seat and stuff like that. So he, I would say he was my idol but early on. Jarrell Beckles. Wow, man. That's, I, I didn't expect that. I was, hoping, I was expecting like another name that is more famous that, you know, like the ones that you can see it out, you know, somewhere else. So this yeah. is amazing. This is good. I'm glad a lot of people will probably be excited to hear you say Jarrell Beckles. That's, that's big. That's big. So, what about the Garrison Savannah right now? Today, tomorrow is the biggest day for the, for the year. Um, you say you got one or two mounts tomorrow? Three. Three mounts tomorrow. In which races are you riding in? Uh, race two, race seven, and race nine. Three, seven, and nine. Two, seven. Two, seven, and nine? You know what? Maybe I'll play that uh, triactor tomorrow. Two, seven, and nine, <laughs> and see what happens. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Two, seven, nine. <laughs> Uh, are you looking forward to the Gold Cup, Cup more? Yeah. Who do you think is going to win that race? Jerry the Nipper. Jerry the Nipper. No, if I'm not even thinking about You thought about your jockey, but you didn't think about the horse. Yeah. Jerry the Nipper is going to win. Jerry Nipper. And why is that? Because Patrick is riding it? Um, I, I, that's the ice on the kid. He seems to be a good horse. I like how he's working too. Well, I like how Patrick does work. I mean, say, Patrick's very quite relaxed. You don't like a horse that's fussing too much or anything. I believe he's the one to beat. Man, Patrick legend. It's going to be a great day tomorrow, man. Yep. It's already hot already, so I can't imagine like 2, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon how hot it's going to be. <laughs> All right, nice to talk to you, man. All right, respect. I ran into uh, Rommel, uh, last year Gold Cup win, uh, training, winning trainer. And uh, he said he was going to do an interview. He wanted to talk. So I'm going to go see him. And uh, let's get some words in. Get it here. Oh, man, good to see you, man. Good to good finally to meet you in person, you know. So. 
So, Gold Cup time again. Last year you won the, uh, you were the winning trainer. Yeah. And here we are again. Um, it's a special feeling every time Gold Cup comes around. Of course, yes. Yeah, it's, it's our premier race. It's the premier race of the Caribbean. It's the premier race. It's like a whole carnival for the Gold Cup, you know. Since being the reign champion, you know, it's, it's good. We have, we, have, we have one of the old boys in the race, you know, in his fourth blue round. Uh, I think both is as good as possibly could be. Very competitive deep field. I think this is one of the best put together fields in the history of the race. You know, it's a small field but very competitive. It does have a um, like now that the, the race is almost here, you can tell the difference with, with people who are involved with the racing. Is it any different for you or not really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the edge is off now. You know, breaking the ice of trying to win my first one, but um, previous to that, Bodhi Tap was my best finish, he finished in second. Now, you know, you can say you're, you're, you're a member of the elite who have won the race. Um, yeah, the tension is still there, because this is a one, once a year, once a year thing, everybody's in town, you know, you get all the shippers, you get everybody flying back, all the media, everyone is, everybody's here just to cover the race, you know. Um, get all the riders in, and it's just a completely different atmosphere. You know, just leading up to the race, you know. But you don't have your horse from last year? You don't have your jockey from last year? Uh, no. Um, we don't We don't have uh, Exagama, unfortunately. And Jalan was unable to travel. But I think we have a we have a very good lieutenant in place at every core Prescott. We have um, built up a good a good team together between, between himself and me. So I think, um, I think that we can pull it off, you know, once everything goes well. Now, how many uh, horses do you have tomorrow? Besides the Gold Cup, you got any more horses running? Yeah, um, got a whole set on the day. Um, got Show the Money in the Spa Spring, and Rico is running that as well. And then I got Mirror the Sky in the Tanglewood. Um, that's running by, by, by Rush, by Hughes. And then got I got St. Anthony's running by Rocco Boyne in the trio with the, the Green Monkey. And then I just got a number of horses scattered in the undercard, you know? And yeah, I got try to try to book as much different riders as possible, you know. Like, you know, it's competitive racing, so you know, you get Rocco on one, I get uh, Rico Walker on one, you know, um, have uh, the apprentices. I got Gaskin on one, I got Young Devante Prescott on one, and then I got Enrico riding for me in the Gold Cup and the Spa Spring. I got um, Eric Daniel on one. You know, and then I got Hughes right in for me on Mary the Sky. She was seven. She won seven last year, so that's that's his little darling there. You know, yeah. Um, got a number of riders and got horses spread all all, all around the car. Oh, it's a you know it feels good for me because like I was telling somebody earlier, this is my first Gold Cup since 1980. I don't know, 83, 84, <laughs> well, something. So for yeah. me, it feels good uh, just to be here and you know just kind of taking it in. You know, it feels good. And, uh, yeah, um, it's it's huge. The Gold Cup have just continued to grow. You know, you, you look at especially if you look at the horses that that's here now. You know, before we we have gone through the ranks. You know, we're like we go for twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollar claimers now. <laughs> we get horses in the, in the buyers about ninety eight, ninety nine. You know, which is it's good. It's really really good. You know, before and the rest have become an international race now. You have different owners, you know, so you see one from Fletcher, one from Shot Brown, you know, we have the, we have the big uh, Baba who's representing, despite his horse is American, but he's the Bajan, he's the Bajan powerhouse, you know. Does it make a difference when you hear people like Todd Fletcher, Chad Brown, and all these guys yeah, marching because, into Barbados? Um, yeah, even before I had trainer's license, you know, those are the guys when you watch American races and you look up to those guys, you know. Those guys is on the world scene, you know, just to be a name, just to be mentioned amongst them. And it'd be good if we can top them, you know, in this race, you know. Hmm. Top. What does that mean? When you say beat top them, them all, beat them all. If we can top them, we can come out on top in this race, you know, it'd be very good. Um, one of my mentors said, if you if you blow the top turn, you must have a superior, superior horse to the others to win, you know. So they still they still have to get around the top turn, you know, but the race is running the day. When those gates up ahead, you know. <laughs> I mean, win or lose, Gold Cup is special. It is. It is. And just being a trainer and being part of it, 
It is special, right? Just to, just to be in the race alone, you know, and the lead up, the build up to the race, all the atmosphere, you know, and everyone, everyone, that's what everyone, the main focus is the World Cup, you know. You see from December onward, it's like everyone is just like, just the talk of the tongue, the tempers are high, you know. It's good. The horses know as well, you know, you see the horses bring their A game around this time of year, you know. Mm. Well, it's nice talking to you. Same here, Darren, I'm really actually you in person. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy to finally get to meet you in person. I, I met a lot of a few people here already, first time ever. Yeah. Like I met them from far, but yeah. now that I meet you guys in person, it, it's a different feeling. So same here. I'm really same happy. Here. I like that hat, just right. Just right. It was given to me as a gift by um, by Rashid Hughes. You know, we had a very good year last year together. Um, I was second in the championship, and he won. He won his. He won the jockeys. I was second in the trainers. Just being on the last day by by Nunez. Um, it was Nunez, so he gave me this as a gift. Tell me just right. Just keep, just, you know, just keep punching. <laughs> I want to ask you a question though. Be, how, how special is it as a trainer and you see these jockeys, the ones who take a chance and go abroad and make it? Does it yeah, it's, it's huge for us. You know, well, well, one of the good things that I said to someone recently is that um, we, we, produce, we produce so much riders on, for, for small, tiny island you know jurisdiction we produce so much riders you know world-class riders and unfortunately we cannot everyone can have a chance in Barbados because the race is every every two weeks and then we only have like 12 horse fields and you know we produce so many riders you know and you see the riders go off and then they come back it's good when they come back and they bring back their craft you know and let people know this is what this is what I've learned abroad you know and they come back home and share it with the youngsters I mean all the guys who's coming back to be very good whether it be sharing knowledge or giving them the young riders they talk and you know, I, I can tell you that all the riders who come back here, you see after go back there, you see them leave the helmets, they leave their body protectors, the boots, their whips. When they leave the jockey house, they leave all the stuff back when they got young guys who's coming through all the time. So that's a good, that's really, really good. You know, I, I like the program. Uh, it's, it's a good thing what you guys are doing. Uh, keep supporting the industry. Uh, keep giving those youngsters a chance, you know, just a glimmer. That's all they need, man. Yeah, we, we're, we're producing them and, it, and it's good, you know. The young, the, even the, the riders who's coming back, you see them on the morning, they're coming to share the knowledge that they've learned abroad as well too, you know. They're sitting on horses and, you know, the, the camaraderie, and, you know, it, it really boosts us and boosts the whole race, the whole lead up to the race as well. Beautiful, man. Really beautiful. All right, nice talking to you. Same here. I'm Same really here. happy that I got to meet you in person and Same best here. wishes to more, man. Thank you. Hopefully. Because you you got a lot of experience in this horse racing business, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. I'm in the race to find the seventies. From the seventies. Yeah, about seventy-two, seventy-three. I come in the race for a little boy. Coming from Jamaica, climbing down in Maple. I love us. So I just when I little boy, I just love us. They all come to ride. I know everybody coming in the race to ride. And come to stable, going around, going around there. I end up having some Baba Uni stable and get off in the third motor. I was two years old. Been some good type of race. Going to Trinidad. Been Darby in Jamaica, going to Trinidad. I've been 90 years. Been Darby in uh, Jamaica, been Darby in Trinidad. Leave back Trinidad, come back to Jamaica with the same ass. Wow. Same year, fly back and win back to rest time. Super safe. Coming back, flying back to Trinidad, have a big race, the international race, Caribbean Classic. Fly back with the same ass, come back and run. But you never run nothing, car. You do too much flying. The yeah, ups and down, you know? Then they're back in Jamaica, working with Mr. Yonis again. Leave back in 204, come back to Trinidad with two hours, Wuram and Latona. Get beat by me with Latona. Deal with Latona and Tinatel, my trainer, Mr. Baba Yonis said, I, want, I like to go to Trinidad. Him, yeah, I like to go to Trinidad. So I said, well, anywhere you want to go, I can't stop you, but I don't believe you're going to leave me. Because, you know, I don't want to love you and check for you, and he's a man of every man. And Mr. Alway, he's my godfather, Elias Alway. But one, most of the I ask them, one tell him what so, so I tell him, so I say, well, check Mr. Andrew and Yunus in Barbados, you know? So anyway, they ask them to leave Trinidad to come to Barbados. See him last one and go around, come run a certain race. So I came with the ass and cover me with everything I want. Cause the man was 
love me and check for me. So anything I want, they make me have it. Mr. Yoon is the same thing, like my father. I love him, he love me. Anything at all I ask him for, I can get it. Did you, did you think when you got involved with horses that you'd be traveling so much? No, no, I never really have that experience that I would have really traveled. And if I'm traveling, it don't cost me nothing to travel. They want to always take care of me, respond to me. And I come here, come on Kendall Plantation Farm, come work with Mr. Younes, and up there win some race. And he's come down here, Mr. Younes, bring me back in St. Lucia. But he is some horse him and come back here and, you know? I just enjoy what I'm doing. The pay is not nice, but I enjoy what I'm doing. I love us. Now, you, you just mentioned a few countries already. Yeah. And is there one that stands out the most well, for you? I love my country, but Barbados. I love Barbados too. Barbados is my second country. You know? is, the, is there one that's unique that you say, oh, that one was different? Yeah, well, Barbados. Barbados. Yeah, Barbados. It's different. Nothing uh, about Barbados. But I love. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, Barbados? Yeah. Well, Barbados is a nice place. Paradise, I'm going to say. It's paradise, it's true. But you have to know that. So it's paradise, you know? Plenty of things. Nice here. Okay? Enjoy yourself and make yourself comfortable. Because nobody can make you comfortable, you know? It's you have to make yourself comfortable. That's right. Yeah, and everything. You have ups and downs in race, you know? So you have to enjoy the body, you have to enjoy the good. And this house here is also been sat there. And disputed. This hard work. Undisputed? Yeah, this is undisputed. Wow. Hard work. Wow. Morning and evening you have to work on him. Lot of work. Are you proud of this horse? Oh gosh, I love him. You have to go out, I go out to see at 4 o'clock in the morning time with him. Wow. On the road early. Less vehicle. Can, very good boy. Mm. Kick, bike, do everything. Mm. So you see, I have to plug all the ears. That's, you don't hear nothing on the, on the road. Yeah. In feet are there, you know, look. Have him feet. Tie up like a handcuff on him. This thing is like a handcuff feet. This thing is, they call it armor. It's like mm. a handcuff feeling. I see, yeah. I see. We're living this thing here. Can do a lot of kicking, biting. Yeah, so this thing, that you know, I'm steady in the stock. I'm like, run around the stock. So when you have on this thing here, you behave himself. That's right, And that's he used right. to walk in this thing here. What, walk what? nearby, though. Why do you think for it? You put it on like this. Black man. Turn them fish left Hey, give me a boy. I've never seen this one before. Yeah, this, this is my trainer, Mr. Eunice, invented. I don't know invented, but I've, yeah, I've never seen this one before. Kendall, you that travel with the arse box. Travel with the arse and from Kendall too. The garrison. So they right. ask them, you that kick down, the, kick down the box and go out with a lot of things. Rail up and, and bring in this here. You put on the arse with them. Just keep the arse and quiet in the box. Mm. Four of them, two on the back, two on the front. Mm. So just keep them quiet. And we travel with it. You come here, see where? I'm going to use them arse in the stars here, man. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Keep it from what the start. Now, how, how important is uh, Nunez to this horse racing industry, oh, oh man? Oh, gosh, man. Great man, man. Very important. I can tell you, I've seen videos with him, and uh, a lot of people give him a lot of respect, he especially in Jamaica. Man. Good man, man. Man as ever. Love him. Mm -hmm. You know? Right, sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, in brother is my father. Anthony Baba Yunis is my father, and he is my uncle. Take care of me, you know? <laughs> Yeah, right, sure. Now, what, what's the biggest race you've won? Well, Derby. Red Shark Super Sick and Derby. I win, I win Derby. Two Derby in one year. Derby in Jamaica and Derby in Trinidad. Nice, nice. Yeah, come back and win. Red Shark Super Sick, the same year. Well, the same hey, look, man. It's nice talking to you, man. Yeah, man. Right. Thank Respect you. every time. Yeah, man. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Hey, so we had the Garrison Savannah. And here's my guy. We've been around horses for like 15 years. Uh, what's your name, sir? Greg Allen. Greg Allen. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with these horses. Yeah, they come up, me and Rocco come up together as youngsters together, being true. Rocco had his horse, his own horse. So we being back in the room, learning to ride, started to ride down at Rocco's yard. True Rocco had the license and everything. We start maneuvering, doing all kinds of things together. We used to train together, then he got on his thing for you to train, we used to maneuver together because we ended up, we go to school together. We came up together, as a matter of fact. So, I just kept on with it. So, what's the relationship with you and Rocco? 
Rocco Bowen, right? Yeah. Because, you know, people say here Rocco, but they don't know exactly who it's we're true. talking about. So it's tell true, us a little definitely. bit about you and Rocco. Who's this Rocco? Rocco is one of my favorite jockeys. Came a long way. Came from, came from school days together as youngsters together. Rocco is one of my favorite jockeys right now at the, in America. One of my favorite jockeys in Barbados, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah. So you, you I, I think yesterday when we spoke, you said you wanted to be a jockey. But yeah. I'm looking at you and like, there's no way you could be a jockey. Yeah, so but tell us why you didn't pursue being a <laughs> jockey. I want to hear that story again, man. After the horse that Rocco had, one horse Rocco had me a rough neck. I got one for one day and I said, we'll never go back again. <laughs> like I said, no, you have to come back. I said, never go back again. Cause it ain't up, it, it ain't up make me go further in the, in the jockey school, learning to ride, all kinds of things like that. But eventually I got bigger, so I give up on it. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's lessons like that that is well learned because now here you are doing your thing and you're good at it. Yeah, it's true. Who's this baby behind you? Who's this, this horse? This is Hawk Stepper. Hawk Stepper? Yeah. How old is this horse? This is four. Four years? Yeah, she ran second in the derby last year. Nice. So tell me about you, yourself, and what makes you come here early in the morning to feed these animals and take care of these horses. Yeah, these come like my kids. And I'm not around, I don't feel that at all. So most of the time, most of my time comes here. Nice. Most of my time, I don't even get much time for myself as well. Wow, wow. Yeah, so they edit the air, let's say around 5.30 in the morning. My, my, I'm not going to leave for not at all long, but say around 6, after 6. So most of my time comes here. It seems like you and the horse is at like at one. Uh, what makes that relationship so special? Yeah, it's the way I deal with them. Most of the time, the way I take care of them. Because most of the time, you get all of my time. So we have a bond and like a, like a kind of relationship. Wow. Wow. Oh, and this is a race horse, right? Yeah. Man, this is something. So 15 years in the business. Yeah. Wow, beautiful, man. Um, hey, look, man. Thanks for your time, man. You're welcome. Respect. Okay, Chronicles? Chronicles. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, where'd you get that name from? Right now, it's a, it's a jockey in Jamaica. You see, name that way. A rider. And I'm just give me that nickname. Wow, man. That yeah. Chronicles sounds intense. Like, you got a whole lot of history. <laughs> it's a good jockey in Jamaica. You see, name that way. So all my friends, them just, them just give me that name. So I mean, they like that jockey there and thing. So they just give me that name. How did you get involved with horses? My father, you know. My father is a groom in Jamaica. And he used to exercise us. So I exercise them. When I tell me, you know, when I get more older, so the trainer tell me, so they go and groom to us. So nice. So, uh, first half, we get in 2000. First time I'm running on me and I'm on second. Third time I'm running fourth, then if, then we race back again and win a big race with Shane Ellis. And we leave and go to England. Spend uh, four years and you know, come back home. Then we reach in Barbie around 2006. 2006, yeah. We come in Barbie around. From that, we start going exercising. Man, that, that sounds like a like a lengthy history yeah, of horse racing. Real, real history. Did you ever imagine that you would be in Barbados right now? No. no. Wow. It's when usually my friend call me from some friend who's over here. Call me, ask me for one. Come say yeah. Come. So I work with Mr. Yunis. First half me look off a win with Patrick Osborne World Cup day. Never win a race yet. Patrick Osborne ride him. I win from 10 length. Oh, which that horse day. was that? We don't have name, we don't name again. I can't remember any. Go oh, long. But 10 length? Yeah, I have remember any. And then after, okay. so let me get a big ass name, Kendall Moon. I remember that one. Yeah. Now, you know, I, I met so many uh, horsemen, so many grooms, so many trainers. Yeah. And um, it's a lot of Jamaican good horsemen. What makes you guys so special? What makes the Caribbean guys so special? I don't know why, but Caribbean guys, them know about us. And they want the best for them us. 
And they love them? Yeah, they love us. They're going to love us, they make no sense. Oh, they love them. Man that beat ass and them things, they don't love them. They love them. Mm. They love them. <laughs> Take care of them. You know, the way you guys talk about horses, like I've met several people and they talk about horses like these horses are their children. Yeah. Now okay, family. Enough time, enough people say, well, you know, we left this. We look something better. I know we just left this. We love this. Mm. And you have to love it. I'm going to love it. I tell you, I love it. Now, you have you worked at K Manus? Yeah. And tell me a little bit, of, a little bit about down there and Garrison Savannah. K Manus, Jesus. K Manus are better. If you deal with us in K Manus, you have to well. Yes, I know you're coming in the evening, you know, must catch up now. They just this and that, but Jamaica now is different. So every trainer, a man, he go up on the truck with the ass, with shit mark on him. Here in, in the tail and then you can't do that in Jamaica. I said, your ass have to look so good for go up on the truck. If you don't look good, you can know, send you back with him. I'll take you off of him. So appearance means everything. The appearance means everything. Every trainer like their ass look so good. Then you know who I going to come, come look for your ass and like for carry two ass come here. So you just look him and look for your ass. I want to see your ass and say, well, the trainer there groom them up their ass look so good. You know, they can't see that. You know, when you walk and when you stand, you know, sometimes you feel back, pain in your back, you see in quarter look. I feel, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm not for that. Hey, look, man. Yeah. It's always good talking to you guys, man. You guys do an awesome job, man. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Respect, yeah. man. Respect, man. Take care, man.